Here we are again for another wonderful episode. And today's guest is a friend through one of our guests, Denise Cruz, actually, is how we came to know her. Um, Denise told me about her and we wrote each other. And I, with no further ado, here is Beth Figgles. Well, Hi, Beth, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I really, I'm very excited. And I want to say thank you to you guys for having this space because it's really, really great um, for, for not just for adoptees to talk, um, but also for people to hear our stories and our experiences. So thank, thank you. you. Thanks. It is important. So how, how are you here? And tell us your story. <laughs> um, well, I'm, um, I'm from Los Angeles originally. I'm from the Valley. I was, I was born in Encino. So I am literally a Valley girl. You're a Valley girl. <laughs> yes. Um, but I, I was born in the sixties and I'm, a, I'm, I'm 56 now. And I was adopted, um, at a week old. So very so baby scoop era. Yes, definitely. Right. Yes. I mean, it, it after reading American Baby, I was like, this is kind of like me. It's it's so fascinating. And so kind of some of it's sad to know about those things. But yeah, I um, I was adopted. I was very lucky. I was adopted at a week old. Um, my birth mother knew she didn't want me to be in a foster home, according to the stuff that the adoption agency gave me, the non-identifying info that I got. And um, my parents were they had tried you know just like a lot of people they wanted kids they had tried and it didn't work out and so they decided to adopt and my dad was adopted um so I think it was kind of made sense to him um because I um he was very grateful to my my grandmother um, for kind of saving him from an orphanage so I think for him it was like something that he sort of wanted to pay it forward you know um <clears throat> And so, yeah, I, I definitely, um, did they tell you your, like yeah, your, the, your yeah. whole life that you were, yeah, yes. I, it's funny. I was just trying to think of how to say that. <clears throat> um, they, they always told us we were, in fact, I don't actually know the first time they told us, but we knew when we were very young, I don't remember like the, so you have a sibling that also was adopted. I have a younger brother who's adopted as well. Um, and, um, we're, I mean, I love him. We're not super close and we never have been, um, but he's my brother. But yeah, we had, I think I mentioned this before. Um, I never, I don't remember that conversation. I knew I was adopted and we had this book that my, my mom and dad got us that I guess they would read to us because it's kind of tattooed on my brain, the pictures. Um, and um, so we, that was not a secret. But then on the other hand, besides having the book, we never talked about it. And um, yeah ever <laughs> so that was, was your information <laughs> yes that's it we're done um we already told you and if you know if I remember asking my mom when I was probably like seven or eight like can't you go get another baby because you know that's how you do it you go to the the children's office and <laughs> you can right but my mom was like no we're done two is enough um but, but I also did, you know, you know how kids kind of hear things or I don't remember how I came to this information, but I did know as a child that my dad, there was some weird story about how he was adopted and I didn't really understand it completely because my dad still had his mom, but, I, but then I knew my grandpa wasn't his real dad. So um, mm -hmm. he must have told us or I must have heard some people talking about it, but it, I know it was in my, my mind because I, I remember telling my brother, I was probably about eight or nine. And so he was two years younger. And I was like, dude, we have to be good because if they uh, get divorced, we're going to an orphanage. I just like, I, in my heart, I just knew, you know, cause that's what happens, you know, and you know how kids are. I mean, all kids are like this anyway, but I think for adoptees, we don't know who we are in yeah. a way. We don't, we don't know any of that. Um, and we're told to just be grateful. And so, yeah, I, I made up a story <laughs> because, you know, I was just trying to fill in the gaps in my head. Um, and, and you're living with that anxiety a little bit that, <clears throat> sure. that, that because yeah. no one is talking to you about it, right. That and, could happen. And it happened, it happened to my dad and it was, it was not good. Like he, 
he um, later as an adult, you know, I found out more of the details, but it was during the World War II and my grandmother couldn't make ends meet and she had just gotten divorced and she was in a different city and she put my dad and his brother, my, my uncle, um, in an orphanage for about four or five years. And they were little. Kids. How, I was just going to ask how old they were. My dad was four and my uncle was two. So if you mm. can imagine you, you have kids, I have a stepdaughter. No, I can't. Someone that young and like just putting them someplace for four or five years. Uh -huh. I mean, it's, and it's, I, so I understand when my dad said it was awful. I, because, but then on the other hand, my grandmother got remarried and she came to fetch her kids. So my dad was also very grateful to her at the same time. So he had a lot of, I think he had some issues yeah. Around I mean, <laughs> yeah, I would imagine like gra gratitude, but also huge resentment. Yes. And, or and not understanding that abandonment. Yeah. Why did you abandon me? Exactly. So, so yeah. I, I do think that it, for him and his mind, adoption made sense, you know, because I'm sure he felt like he wanted to save some kids. Um, yeah. And I'm actually trying to write about this right now. So <clears throat> it's very interesting. But um, yeah, you know, when I, my parents got divorced, then my parents actually did get divorced and it, we did not get put into an orphanage. <laughs> um, <laughs> Gladly, I'm glad for you. Right, right. So yeah, um, because they don't really exist anymore. But no, um, right. Yeah, when, when I was a teenager, my, my mom and dad got divorced. Um, and my mom is, my mom is gay. And so my mom found a partner that she's still with. And uh, my dad got remarried um, about three minutes later after they got divorced. Like, and how old were you? As men do. I was, um, I was 16. It was like a, it was just a bad, it was a bad time. It was yeah. teenager, teenage, you know, and I have a stepdaughter and, you know, teenagers, it's just rough. It's just hard being that age. And I had a really hard time because again, they didn't tell us what was happening. And then suddenly you're getting divorced, you're getting remarried, you're gay, which is fine, but it was just very similar to my story. Yeah. You know, I was going to say, yeah. And, um, I was, I had a really, um, I had a really hard time. I dropped out of high school, which I'm not ashamed of because, um, Oh, are you still there? Okay. Um, and, you know, I just kind of had to, I think a lot of adoptees go through this. We sort of have to make our way, um, without really knowing what the heck we're doing. <laughs> For sure. You know, um, but yeah, you know, I, um, I just, I just had to kind of make do and not, you know, I did eventually go back to school. I went to college and, um, <clears throat> but when I was in my twenties, I really started wanting to, to search for my birth mother. <clears throat> Excuse me. And how Sorry, you're in school and going through all these. Oh, sorry, you, you broke up me? for a second. Can you hear me? Can hear sorry. Yeah, okay. So we'll edit that part out. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you were in high school and going through all these things, mm -hmm. well, let's wait for Sarah. Maybe let's pause it for a second. Okay. So Beth, when you were going through all that in high school, how was your your brother? Was he going through this too? And did your parents have any sort of? Um, feelings to help you or no I mean I you know I don't actually um we were just trying to act normal and I th I think um I think I, a lot of people go through this not just adopted people but um we were just trying to act like everything was fine um my parents got divorced and as I said my dad got married um really <laughs> soon afterwards <laughs> And yeah, we were, we were just, you know, expected to kind of act like everything was fine. And, um, there was no, did you have, did you have step siblings? No, <clears throat> I didn't. Um, my dad and my stepmom um, tried, but it didn't work out for them. I'm surprised they didn't adopt another baby. Actually. That's what I was going to say. I'm surprised <laughs> with your dad. <laughs> no, they didn't, but, um, no, I just, I think it was, it, it was just like, we just kind of went along just kind of in a, I've, for myself personally, I was just in a haze. I mean, I, I wasn't raised to like talk about my feelings or even identify my feelings at all. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. and so when I got into high school, it just, everything fell apart. You know, I, and it was, it was okay. I was, I had a, um, I had a boyfriend who was a few years older and he was like a safe person to be with. And he was kind of my surrogate parent actually for a while. I didn't, my parents just were not, they were in their own 
crises. Mm -hmm. And I had to find someone else to sort of look out for me. So I did. And um, yeah. And so I, you know, I, he was in college and um, I used to go to school with him sometimes. He went to Cal State Northridge. He was really smart. And I met him at work. That's actually another way that I sort of took my mind off of all the things that were going on in my life was that I would, I had a job. Yeah. And um, yeah, I dropped out of high school. No, no one, no one ever asked us if we were okay. And first thing that parents noticed, but of course they didn't do anything about us. I was always um, in the gift program in California back in those days anyway, they would have special classes um, or enhanced learning for people who were gifted. And so and when I was in 11th grade, I had done so not good that they put me in a special um, group of people for, it was for um, underachieving gifted people. <laughs> And I was like, I got to the, I just remember going a couple of times. I'm like, I don't want to hang out with these losers. <laughs> <laughs> and when I, you I, left school, did anybody try to intervene or help you or? No. And I just stopped going and I, I lied to my parents and. That sounds so much like my, my childhood. I was, <laughs> I was really good at lying to my parents. Um, and because they were so unfocused on us, they, they just didn't notice anything until it was too late. Yeah. Um, and that's just mm -hmm. that's what it was, you know, my, my mom wasn't really around. Um, although my mom would kind of maybe once a month, come take us out to dinner or something. She was going through her own, her own stuff. And, um, although my mom did try to engage my mom, um, this, this was the seventies and eighties and my mom was really involved in, um, these EST seminars. EST was a thing. Um, mm -hmm. oh, I I remember, yes. My mom, my, when we were younger, my mom had made us take the EST training because they allowed kids to do it, which is really bizarre. But my mom- They, uh, they still do allow kids at Hawaii. I, yeah. I know somebody <laughs> did that with, with her son. I was like, yeah, can it, you just talk to him? Oh yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was very weird because it was like all adults with their adult issues and it was kind of no holds barred. So it was very weird for us, but- but my mom, so later, you know, when, after the divorce, um, Est used to have these kind of ongoing uh, workshops after, you know, for graduates. So my mom and I did a couple of those together because she thought it would help me, I guess, but it, you know, but then again, we didn't talk about anything. It was just, I just wasn't, um, you know, in an environment where I felt safe to talk. And I think a lot of adoptees go through that too. I mean, we just don't feel safe. Yes because people don't want to hear anything beyond, um, it was great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. You can't, it's a, it's a very hard topic to bring up. And when you're rebuffed with it, it's like, okay, it's not a it's, safe thing. It's so, I mean, I have to say just for me, I, my entire life, like people, the stuff they say to, to us, crazy. It's just mind blowing, like from family, from friends, from coworkers, from strangers, just, they just, in fact, this just even recently, like a couple months ago, I was at dinner with some family, but also some people I didn't know. And this person I had never met before just was like, oh, well, that's great. Adoption is great. And I was like, it's not the venue to really get into an argument, but you know, I don't even know you, you know, like <laughs> you don't know what I went through. So yeah, I mean, people just, they don't, they don't want to hear. And I, it's hard sometimes to know when it's safe to talk about it or not. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's yeah. one, one of the nice things about getting older is that you just sort of have to, <laughs> sometimes you just decide I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sarah, and, Sarah and I, when we were interviewed in an, article, in an article, we're like, you get to the age where you're like, I don't give a fuck. I mean, that's the reality. We have feelings. I don't, we're going to talk about them. I definitely, you know, one thing that has, I found that has helped is that I, for the past year and a half, I've tried to connect with people on adoptee Twitter. And it's just so nice to hear other yeah. people not just their stories but like their issues or or what how they're Things trying they're working to, through mm -hmm. trying to advocate for things um it's been really positive i mean mostly positive some some people are crazy but yes um they just definitely. go definitely yeah but it's been really um heartwarming to just kind of see how other people deal with similar issues that like we're not alone because i think 
a lot of adoptees feel alone because we we feel alone in our families. Um, I did. Anyway, mm-hmm. I did too. We feel lonely. It's a lonely feeling. Feel lonely even when we're around other people because we're different. And even though everyone says, no, no, you're not different. You're one of us. And they, they might even mean it, but we don't, that difference isn't really acknowledged. Um, and, and we're not encouraged to talk about it. And I think that would have been so helpful if my parents had just talked to, to us about yes. it a little bit and just said, hey, you might have different feelings and it's okay. Just something like that, just anything. <laughs> um, yeah. They were just we, not capable, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, we, I, I met with my brother last night, my um, adopted brother, and it was our first, I mean, he's 58 and I'm 53. Is our first big conversation about this really open open that's great that's and it was a really it was really neat it's because of this podcast and it just he had no idea and he's been reading all these things and I think it's right it, you know and he's like I feel I feel like I should I'm like well you're the child too you right. know that's the thing it was the conversation the lack of conversation is really mm-hmm. yeah I mean I I think um I you know I think my parents just did what they thought was the best thing and you know just act like everything's normal and don't talk about it and that was that was their that was their approach and um and your dad is coming in with a whole different set of things from his yeah situation. I mean I and again it's it's uh I mean that's what I'm trying to write about him now because I think it's in a way it's a way to connect with him um even though I mean I can talk to him you know he doesn't he's not here, but it's a way for me to sort of know more about him. And um, yeah, I, I wish, I wish we could have connected on it somehow, because it's like this thing that we have in common, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was just too painful for him, but I, um, I, you know, I, I do, I do know that um, when, when I was, when I was searching, when I found my birth mother, like he never, he never encouraged me to do it. <laughs> and I think he was probably worried. And I did find her. I remember talking to him. Um, right before- Louise, do you want to pause it? It's glitching. Is he, it glitching? Wait. Just- um, so right before I met my birth mother, I I found her and we had made a date um, to meet. And um, you know, my my dad, um, as I was saying, my dad never discouraged me from searching, but he never really said anything encouraging about it either. And I think it just made him uncomfortable. But I went over to see my dad and my stepmom right before I met my birth mother. And he how did you find her, by the way? Um, uh, it wasn't wasn't easy. Um, I had to, I mean, it was back in the day, so I had to do it the old fashioned way, you know, like writing letters and I Through had, the adoption agency, you mean? Yeah, I had, um, I, I knew my real last name hmm. and, uh, my, my parents had saved a few legal documents that I had found because I'm nosy when I was a kid, I found them. <laughs> All, all us adoptees share that in common, yeah. our well, investigative skills. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, my, my dad, you know, I was just saying, I wish my dad and I had been able to connect more about adoption because it was something we both went through. But this one night, anyway, um, one, of, one of the only times he's ever said anything like this, he told me about when he and my mom found out they were going to uh, come get me. And, you know, they got a phone call, like, come get this baby tomorrow. And he just said, I could tell it was really meaningful to him. He was not a warm and fuzzy person. He didn't talk about his feelings a lot, but he was telling me the story of how they were really excited and they went shopping to buy a lot of stuff, baby stuff. And that afterwards they went to the movies to see Mary Poppins. Um, and it was just, my dad didn't tell stories like that, you know, <laughs> it was really, he was really trying to connect about it. And um, he, he wasn't happy that I, that I was meeting my birth mother, but I think he understood the, um, the impulse to do that, you know, um, 
and uh, he he didn't he didn't talk about my birth mother although the couple times he referred to her he called her that woman he didn't he didn't oh name. yeah so so yeah but at least he said he said something that was maybe one of the only times we were able to connect about it um what about but, your mom your uh, your adopted mom uh, my mom my, my adopted mom is um i mean she just my mom is i love my mom she's my mom but she's kind of self-involved and um <clears throat> So in a way, in this situation, that was good because she wasn't trying to interfere. She never, she would just talk about herself. (laughs) I would just say, I'm doing this and that. And uh, she would just bring it back to something she was doing. So she didn't, I'm sure it made her uncomfortable too. And that was her way of dealing with it. It's uncomfortable, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure that adoptive parents, you know, when their kids do this, they, they feel judged and it's not about that for me anyway. Mm -hmm. And my relationship with my parents did not change after I found my birth mother. It was the same. So Um, tell us you found, it took some digging and this was when, how, when was this? So this was in the mid nineties. Okay. That's when I started looking. Yeah. I, um, I was almost 30 and I just, I was like, I'm going to, I'm doing this, you know, I'm just going to start. And I had, I had my real last name um, I did all those things like I went to the library, you know, and I like looked in microfilm and I went to the Mormon library. Um, I wrote letters. I, I went to like, um, I went to the Hall of Records and looked through voting registration. So I just, you know, it was like I had to do everything by hand. <laughs> but um, so I went to the library and I found I looked through old phone books and I found someone with the last name that I knew. And there was a woman with that last name, just one. And she lived in Sherman Oaks. And I was like, well, that's her, you know, found her. And so I, um, I, my, my brother helped me a little bit and I, I got her address and I wrote her a letter and I said, you know, uh, if you're who I think you are, I was born on such and such date. And I just, I don't even know what I said, but, uh, it took a while, but she wrote me back and she was not my birth mother. She was my aunt. She was my birth Mm. mother. And so it took her a while because at the time she had been sworn to secrecy um, about everything. But I'm grateful to her because she gave me all the details that I needed. Um, And uh, she told me a little bit about their story. And so then after that, I um, I just looked for my birth mother. And I and one of the details that I found out from my aunt is that my birth mother had grown up in a a very um, religious Mormon family. And um, I went to the Mormon library and in West LA. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they'll help anyone. You don't have to be a Mormon. If you just tell them you're doing family history research, they're like, what do you need? You know? And so it just, it just so happened that my, my birth mother, um, her dad had done a lot of genealogy because they're obsessed with that. And so um, not only did I find some info, I found like uh, this gigantic family tree that her dad had done that goes back to 1650 or something. Wow. <laughs> but better, yeah, that's better than online ancestry. <laughs> I know. And so I, I love libraries anyway. I'm, I'm an English major. So I, that was really exciting. But so I, I found her, I, again, my brother helped me um, locate her and um, she lived a few hours away from LA and um, I wrote her a letter and I called her and, and she was not, she was not happy about it. I think she was shocked. Um, What were the circumstances that um, she was pregnant, gave you up and all that stuff? Not, not an unusual story. She, she and my birth father, um, had been high school sweethearts and they had known each other and I guess you know her dad didn't like him and um they sent her off to to college you know how back in the day sometimes in California or in LA County way that high schools would have two graduating classes like one in the winter time oh in the oldest yeah Mm -hmm. so she I think she had graduated from high school in the winter and then her dad sent her to bring him young right away just to separate them but they kept seeing each other and she got pregnant and she told me that they were going to get married um 
and that they had told their parents, but then he, um, my birth father just decided that he didn't, he, I don't think it was a conversation, but he just kind of um, skipped out on her and joined the Navy instead and left her, which is- Went to Vietnam? Uh, he did. I, he, um, he had been in ROTC, I think in high school. So it was an easy choice, you know, and he only wrote her like months later. And by that time it was too late. Um, cause she, she, you know, he had abandoned her and wow. Um, That's harsh. She did. She did not. She did tell me, um, the one time we talked about it, that she, I think her family wanted to, you know, they would adopt me or her sister would take me in or something like that. And she just didn't want that. Um, yeah. So yeah, she made up her mind really soon that she wanted to give me up, um, which it's hard. I mean, I like on the one hand, I understand it, but on the other hand, I, it hurts, you know, I, it's, it's hard too, because I wasn't able to reconnect with her. Um, she just wasn't able to, to do to, that. Yeah. I think, I mean, we, we've met twice. The first time was, you know, we agreed to meet and then and it was, it was nice. But then I think, I think afterwards she just couldn't, um, see it as a sustainable relationship, but she didn't tell me that she, and so for a while, um, we wouldn't talk. And then she would send me a birthday card and then she, she would say, let's talk more. And then I wouldn't hear from her again. So after a while, it just started to be really hurtful for me. And mm -hmm. so I, I told her, it was probably about six or seven years in after we remet. I said, if you don't want to do this, then don't, because this going through this every year is starting to be really painful for me. <laughs> and that was really hard. I, it wasn't like I wanted to tell her that, but. Um, it's healthier for you because that's like rejection, rejection, rejection. <laughs> and the, yeah, I just, it, that was, that was rough. And so we don't talk. I've, I've been, when I got married, I, I emailed her just to ask her if I could have any health info, but she didn't, she gave me some few little things, but we don't talk. And, um, she has a son who I have met, but it's uncomfortable for him because he knows that she doesn't, she doesn't want him to talk to me. <laughs> so it just, he's in just, the middle. I, yeah. So I have to respect that, but I, um, it's hard. And, you know, I'm, I'm lucky because I think a lot of adoptees don't ever get to find, you know, they don't, they just, they don't know how to get started or they don't think they can do it. And um, I feel fortunate that I set my mind to something and I did it. And especially back, back in the day when there was no ancestry.com and, you know, I, I just was like, I'm doing this. I will research whatever I have to do. Um, I did actually, um, also at that time I, I wrote to the, it was the LA County, um, children's bureau that I was adopted through. And so they gave me some info, info. but another interesting thing happened. I, I'm, um, on my birth mother's side, I'm one eighth native Alaskan. Um, oh. and so the lady at the children's bureau asked me if I wanted to get any information about my, um, my native American ancestry. Wow. That's actually so, really interesting. Yeah, but, but sure. Um, whatever, whatever you can give me. So she's like, okay, well, I have to write on your behalf because I can't, because they're not allowed to, you know, reveal my identifying information to me, um, which makes no sense, but so no sense at all. Yeah. Uh, so when they, when they wrote me back or when they wrote back and sent this info, they sent it to me and they sent me a copy of my original birth certificate. Oh, oh which, that's think may have been my mistake or maybe not maybe they were trying to help me out but so I I because I had tried to get it and I just couldn't because it's California so they won't right but someone I someone think it's I like all right I think a lot of states are don't easily give up right. original birth certificates not even, yeah no it's, yeah yeah I mean adoptees in the U.S. in most states you can't you can't get them. yeah I think there's only eight or nine states even now that yeah, it's crazy. Info. And um, I think that's wrong and it needs to change. Yeah, it does. Yeah, 100%. Really does. Yeah. So you found out, you get it, and you what do you find out about your Native American history? Well, they didn't actually send me a lot, um, but I do have a letter that says I'm one eighth Native Alaskan officially. 
um, which is nice. I, I actually, um, I haven't, I haven't spent as much time um, because I, I know I found some cousins, you know, that I found them through Ancestry who I should, probably should get to know. But again, it's awkward because they know my birth mother. And so um, it just turns into a whole thing where, you know, I know that she doesn't want me to be out there talking to them. So that's been actually really hard. Like a roadblock to other people. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, but I think in the meantime, I have just focused on you know, continuing fostering my relationship with my sister, um, who I'm, who I'm close to. And I know, is this your sister through your birth father? Through my birth father. Yeah. Okay. So you found your birth father. I found when I was searching, I found, um, that he had passed away. Um, it was actually, he passed away in 91 and I, I started searching, I think in 93 or 94, oh. it had only been a couple of years. Did but, he, what did he, how did he die? He had cancer. Mm. Um, and my sister, um, uh, took care of him. And, um, so I feel like I kind of got to know him through her and through our brother, but yeah, that was, that was hard. I mean, I, that's actually, I didn't expect that. Um, and when I met my birth mother the first time I had to tell her, she didn't know either. And, um, that was kind of hard. Did she, did it affect her? I don't know. I, she's, she's very, um, uh, I had a therapist that used to call this being well defended. She's yeah. very, you know, you can't tell. <laughs> yeah, I I'm sure it did, but she didn't. She didn't really talk about it to me. Um, Probably but, years of stuffed down emotions from all of this. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So, so yeah, I um, I just feel really fortunate. I found some siblings to close to and speaking, yeah speaking of siblings and my birth father um a couple years it's been about two and a half years ago my sister um called me one night and she was like you know someone on ancestry connected with me and she was born in 1965 which is the year i was born and i was like it's me um you're you're probably it's a mistake you're probably just looking at my my record and, and i was like but but wait a minute, I'm not on ancestor.com DNA. I did 23. Oh. So we have another sister that we found, through, found us. Born the same year as you? Dad. Same year. She's two months older than me. <laughs> your dad was having some fun during that time. He was having fun in high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was after. Oh after but yeah, no, he, he oh. was a big guy. Um, okay. I, don't, I don't know. We don't know actually the whole story, but she is our sister. And um, I we're still getting to know her, but that was that's crazy. Is she, yeah, is she in California too? You no, know, she she has a she has a totally different story. She she grew up in the Midwest. Um, her parents, you know, were married the entire time, and then no one got divorced. Um, she had a really different. She grew up on a farm. I mean, she's it's very different, and I think it's also. From just from what I've noticed so far, it's really different when you're connecting with or trying to get to know. Was she older. was she adopted too? She is adopted too. Oh, okay, okay. She and I actually and her her adopted together. parents stayed together, and she had a yeah stable yeah yes. I'm and from a door of divorced adopted mm -hmm. parents too. Yeah. Uh, so this would be like if you and I were thing. sisters. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's really it's really it's, i mean that's it's kind of cool the three of you now are connected yeah and so we've we've met her in person once a couple years ago we we met up in new york because my stepdaughter was graduating from college and um we knew we were going to be there so my husband and i were there already my sister lisa who the one i've known for years came and then our new sister came to meet us and it was really intense because it's it's different when you're older you know yeah. like i met my my sister and brother when we were still in our like late 20s early 30s we didn't have families we had jobs but we we just had a lot more freedom i guess um and time yeah you know when you're older and you have more responsibilities um and different you're in a different stage of your life um, it, it just is really different. 
to, to get to know somebody, I think. How did she feel meeting the two of you? Because you already had a relationship was guarded a little or. Um, no, I mean, she's not really a guarded person. She's very open, but I, we did talk about that. I'm like, I told her, I'm like, it's, it's going to take us longer, you know, to get yeah. to know each other because there's so much more to get to know. There's we we've had like long lives already. And yeah. so we're, we're just in a, such a different stage of our lives. And she's, she has a lot of kids and grandkids already. She got married when she was very young. So yeah, we, we're just more busy. I, I think when you're in your twenties, you just like have all the time in the world to, I, I know when I was searching for my birth mother, it's all I did. I mean, I had a job, but other than that, I just spent all my free time searching, you know, and writing letters and going places. And right. I, I wouldn't be able to do that now, <laughs> you know? I'm too tired. <laughs> so how do you feel now? Do you feel like your wounds are healing? Um, it's really interesting that you say that because um, I, in terms of my birth mother, I would say yes. Um, it's, I mean, I think I, you know, like maybe 10 years ago, I would have been a lot angrier about it. I definitely mm. do have some anger, you know, at being not just you know, I understand that it was a situation and everyone felt like that was the best result adoption at the time, but it hurts to be rejected again. It, and so <clears throat> I definitely yeah. was feeling some anger and frustration about that, but you know, I, I'm grateful for my life and I, <clears throat> I tried, I feel like it's important to try with my birth mother. It didn't work out the way I had hoped it would, but yeah. I, I wish her the best. And I, I wish we could be friends and I don't see it happening, but I have to just make my peace with that. Do Grace, you think if you went back in without having major expectations on what it was, that there could be something? You know, I didn't, um, I don't, I don't think I had major expectations. <laughs> I mean, well, I just mean like when you I said did. it, it would, she would reach out and then say, let's talk. And then she wouldn't, I mean, I don't know if you could accept just getting a birthday card and maybe a once a year call or. I don't, I don't know. I, I think at this point, um, if we both really wanted to try it again, I definitely would just sure. I mean, but, um, I think it's, isn't it hard though? Like at, like as a, a relinquished child. I mean, it's hard not to have some expectations. I, I think, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I can't look at her as just, um, I mean, I, I know she went through a hard time and I completely acknowledge that. And I do have compassion for that, but I, I think sometimes if people just can't, can't get there, it's okay to say mm -hmm. can't, Yeah, it's not possible. It's too painful when we try. It's okay. Yeah. I respect her um, as a human being, and I know it must have been incredibly hard what she went through. But yeah, it would be it would be hard to try again unless we both were sure that we wanted to, and we weren't just saying that we wanted to without really thinking about what that means. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. I mean, I it's just I think it's okay to say this doesn't work. Yeah, it's, okay. it's sad. I, I I find it very sad, but it's okay. Um, and I, you know, I think I've been so lucky to have um, my siblings, but, but to your, another side of this is that I feel now like I've, I've in the past year or so I've realized, especially with rereading the primal wound, I have never been able to really process my kind of birth trauma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nor have I. And so that has been really painful and and I'm glad I'm at a point where I can actually go there I think before I I couldn't even think about it you know I, I completely agree I feel like it's, it's hard to face yes yeah and this so this is the time I, this is the time exactly like I I think I am just just being older or having been through other experiences or rereading something that the stuff you couldn't take in before is you're able to take it in now. I just, I read the primal wound and um, the journey of the adopted self back 
when I found my birth mother, probably right after. And I, I know I read them, but it just, you know, the, we take in things in stages and, um, right at that time, I was so focused on finding, finding people searching, which I love to do. Yeah. And not absorbing in a a way like Sarah and I doing this podcast and doing the chapter by chapter. I don't read ahead. Yeah. (laughs) My first, it's my first time reading the primal wound and it actually is very helpful because I just focus in on that for a while. We have two weeks and we mull it and I could have not done this 10 years ago. Yeah, I agree. Some things, you know, are are the things that we go through in our life kind of help us get ready to get to that next stage. Um, And sometimes it takes a long time, you know? Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've had to kind of, I really wanted to, you know, write, it's been in my head for a couple of years. Like I want to write about my dad and I want to research like his, like his orphanage, like where was he exactly? And can I find records on it? And can, do I have anyone who could help me do that? And what was it like Ex- beyond whatever, what he always said? It was terrible. Yeah. Oh, poor but, guy. No, but yeah. Is he still alive? No, he, um, he died in the nine, in the late nineties. And, um, you know, my uncle who was, was also there is also passed away. So I don't have, um, either one of them to, although I don't think either one of them to talk about it anyway. <laughs> That's like that suppressed trauma, I'm sure from, yeah, yeah. like after war or something. Mm, yeah. yeah. I don't want to, I get that. I get that. But the only thing I have for my, my, my uncle is that he, um, my uncle wow. was, my uncle was a little bit younger. So I think he was affected differently by the whole orphanage thing. But my uncle also um, in his later life um, stopped drinking and, and had some therapy. And so mm. he was able to sort of process his own issues. And he actually, um, he searched for their, their birth father and their birth father had died, but he found his birth father's um, second wife and family. And so wow. he was able to meet them and um, get to know them a little bit. And the, he was very welcomed into their family. And so he, he, so I, I heard about, I mean, you know, I was at the time, I remember hearing about it and I just wasn't interested because I was into my own, my own life, but, um, and my dad didn't want to talk to him about it. My dad didn't want to hear it. And, uh, he just, yeah, sometimes like if it's just too, you scratch a little bit and then it's just the bleeding starts. So maybe that's probably, (laughs) he for sure had to keep things wound tight. Just, Absolutely. I mean, we all yeah. do it. But my so the one of the only things I have, one of the only um, pieces of paper I have, is that my uncle wrote. He was taking. Uh, it was right after he had found his birth father's second family. He was taking a psychology class, and so he wrote this paper about the family history as he saw it, and all the kind oh. of family patterns and a lot of stuff about their mom, my grandmother. So I have that. And so there is some, there are some facts and some dates in there. And so it kind of is a jumping off point for me to try to research more about the whole, their orphanage experience and my grandmother's divorce and finding out all those secrets. Um, it's a little gift for you, that piece of paper. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Get, get to work and please I keep know. us posted it's, on that. I'll be so will, curious. I will. I, I wrote, I wrote a <laughs> we want to read it. Yeah, no, I want it to be a book. I just have to do some more research, but I started um, writing. I've been writing for a couple months. I wrote an essay just about my dad um, after he died. And I, yeah, I definitely want it to be a book project. So, so yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing and getting through all these technological issues. Oh, that te- today. You're just wonderful, <laughs> Beth. And yeah. We're so happy to have you in our community. I feel like we have a new friend. Thank you yeah. So- I feel the same way. I really appreciate your time. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, we really appreciate, appreciate your time. I will invite you to the book party. Please. Yes. <laughs> We're not, I feel like everyone, now that we are a community, we will still continue to be a community. Yes, of so. course. Absolutely. Of course. I can't wait. Thank you. All right. Ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.